one of the most curious questions that I ever got from a 10-year-old child was this. Did Jesus have a misunderstanding with his parents? Did Jesus ever have a misunderstanding with his parents? Nagkaroon ba kahit minsan ng hindi pagkakaunawaan si Jesus at ang kanyang parents? Seminarista pa ako noon. I was teaching catechism in a public school for grade 6 students. And I remember I said yes to the student, giving him our gospel reading today as an example. You heard St. Luke in today's gospel explicitly saying his parents did not understand him. His parents did not understand him. On this feast day that is peculiar to the Catholic Church in the Philippines, the image that we get of the Santo Nino from the Gospel is not that of a cute infant Jesus overdressed into a prince wearing a crown and holding a scepter in one hand and holding the world in his other hand. It is, of course, a statement. What we have instead in today's gospel is a picture of a boy. A boy who is beginning to assert his independence and is beginning to reason out with his parents like an adult. Sa Tagalog, mayroon tayong salitang pasaway. Nagiging pasaway ka na dyan, showing some defiance. Gumagawa na ng sariling lakad, trying to walk his own way already. The Gospel writer tells us that Jesus was 12 years old when this thing happened. 12 años. He was, uh, this was the specific age in the life of a Jewish boy when he was expected to start behaving like a young man. He was supposed to work double time on learning the law of Moses because he was about to turn 13 from 12. And 13 is called the age of accountability in Jewish society. Trece años. You see, when a child makes mistakes, or when a child commits acts of misdemeanor, pag ang bata nakagawa ng kalokohan, it is the parents who are held accountable for it. Kasi ang common reasoning natin, bata lang yan. He is just a child. Meaning, nasa pangangalaga pa siya ng parents niya. He's under the wings of his parents. And for the Jewish people, there is a time when the child transitions into a young man or young woman, when the child is supposed to start answering for himself. Siya nang mananagot para sa sarili niya. Ang tawag ng mga Jewish people dito ay Bar Mitzvah. And they're celebrating it up to now. Bar Mitzvah. It is the ritual of coming of age. Bar Mitzvah. Ang literal na kahulugan nito ay the son of the law or the commandment. Anak ng batas o ng kautusan. And I think there is something universal about this. Kasi, di ba, kahit sa English, pag 13 na yung bata, teenager na siya. From 12 to 13, 14, 15, yeah, teen, teen, teen na yung kasunod. Teenager na siya. In Tagalog, the male child who enters teenage life is called nagbibinata. Binata. Ibig sabihin, hindi na bata. Binata. 
Pero hindi pa talaga siya adult. It's that stage. Sa amin sa Pampanga, we use the word bayin tao. And it's very interesting. I don't know if it means a new man. Kasi bayo in Kapampangan is new. Tao, human being. A new human being. <laughs> Yun ang nagbibinata para sa amin. It is that stage when a person begins to search what it means to be a human being. Hindi ba itong pagbasang ito nasa Joyful Mysteries? At ang tawag natin sa kanya, the finding of Jesus in the temple as if Jesus was lost. Natagpuan daw siya sa templo. Kala mo na wala siya. No. He wasn't lost. He deliberately went his own way. It was his parents who lost him. Nagsulat ako ng libro entitled Yeshua. And I'm sure yung iba sa inyo, nabasa nyo na. I call it reading between the lines of the Gospels. And reading between the lines of St. Luke's story about the Holy Family going to Jerusalem every year during the Passover festival. And alam nyo yung Passover festival, eight days yon. San sila titira? Eh, taga Nazareth sila. I suggested in my book na most likely, Nakitira sila, nakikitira sila sa bahay ni Zechariah, Elizabeth, at John the Baptist. The boy Jesus must have looked forward to this annual vacation, yearly vacation in Judea, in the big city of Jerusalem. It was his time to be with his cousin. Sa tingin ko si John Parang kababata ni Jesus. Kalaro, sabi ni St. Luke, he was just six months ahead of Jesus. I imagine that this must have been Jesus' opportunity to learn what his cousin John was learning in the rabbinical schools in Jerusalem where he was being groomed to become a temple priest like his father Zechariah. You would remember Medyo elites ang dating ng pamilya ni Zechariah. Zechariah was a temple priest. And so, Jesus must have sat in. Palagay ko nagsisit in siya sa mga klase ni John. And he must have found the discussions of the teachers very fascinating. Such that he had a heavy heart whenever the vacation came to an end. And he had to return with his parents to Nazareth. And so it happened. One day, he decided to stay behind. Oh, lost ba yan? <laughs> Hindi siya nawala. Nagpaiwan talaga siya. He stayed behind. Aba, gumagawa na ng sariling lakad itong batang to. There is a Lebanese-American poet, Khalil Gibran, who once wrote a piece of poetry reminding the parents how they should behave when their children are beginning to come of age and when they're beginning to walk their own paths in life. Let me read this famous poem. Sabi niya, ang kausap niya, parents, ha? Your children are not your children. They are sons and daughters of life's longing for itself. They come through you, but not from you. And though they are with you, yet they belong not to you. You may give them your love, but not your thoughts. For they have their own thoughts. You may house their bodies, but not their souls. For their souls dwell in the house of tomorrow, which you cannot visit, 
not even in your dreams. You may strive to be like them, but seek not to make them like you. For life goes not backward, nor tarries with yesterday. I love this poem. You know, there is a time in their lives when children simply obey and keep saying yes very subserviently, very obediently to their parents. But inevitably, darating at darating yung panahon. The time comes when they begin to explore the world, when they begin to ask questions, questions like, who am I? What is my purpose in this world? They become more inquisitive, more adventurous. Sometimes, they become reckless also. They begin to experiment on things that they were not allowed to do before. And they are bound to make mistakes every now and then. Luke says, Jesus asked his parents, Sabi ba naman niya, Why did you look for me? Bakit niyo ko hinanap? He was not being disrespectful. He was being candid about what he was going through. That he was looking for himself. Looking for his true identity. His calling. His mission in life. And he felt, probably to the disappointment or the dismay of St. Joseph, Jesus was not finding it in carpentry work, but in teaching. Para bang gusto mong maging engineer or lawyer or big shot businessman ng anak mo, tapos sinabi niya, gusto ko pong maging teacher. He was interested in the rabbi's world of teaching, of imparting wisdom. He must have turned into an avid reader and disciple, learner of the Jewish scriptures. That is why he was drawn. Para ba siyang nababatubalani? He was attracted to the temple. Because the wise teachers of Jerusalem were there in those schools that were attended by his cousin, John. That is why he called the temple his home. Talagang may stage sa buhay ng tao, nagiging at home siya sa bahay ng Diyos. Kahit totoo naman ng home natin, eh, yung mga pamamahay natin. Tingnan mo lang itong mga batang ito ng mga altar servers, pandemyang pandemya, nandito rin sila. There is a certain at-homeness. At some point in your life, you just don't know. You are drawn to the house of God. Well, yes, he was his parents' son. But he was also growing in his awareness that he was a son of his heavenly father who is calling him to fulfill his life's purpose and mission. This stage we call coming of age for children is not an age for the parents to just let go and leave their children by themselves. It is rather a time when parents have to learn to be present with their children in a different way. It is the time when the parents themselves have to learn to let go of their overprotective tendencies. And most parents naman are like that. Eh? Because you love your children, you want to protect them from harm. But at some point, you tend to become overprotective. Because the children also need the time for some distance. Yes, you give them the distance that they need, but it is still important to be there for them, to accompany them, 
to mentor them, to allow them to ask questions, to let go of the idea of making them into carbon copies of yourselves. Ako, I remember the time when my own late father began inviting me to take long walks with him. Kasama yung aso namin, police dog, na si Henry, along the railway of Betis in Pampanga. And there was that, that was the time when I felt that he was no longer treating me like a child, but he was starting to treat me like a young man. You know, very often, we just walked in silence. And when I asked questions, he really listened and took my questions seriously. He had just joined the Cursillo movement back in those days, and he took me with him every now and then to attend Mass at the Cathedral of San Fernando in Pampanga. And after that, we would have a warm bowl of mami noodle soup doon sa everybody's cafe. At magkukwentuhan kami. I remember him asking me if I understood what the priest said in his homily. And I would repeat it and I would sometimes ask him to explain some of the things I did not understand and he would elaborate on it. I think during those times that I myself was transitioning into a young man, Shamismo, he himself was transitioning from raising me as his child to raising me as a child of God, as a brother of humankind, as a good citizen of our country and of the world, as a member not just of his family, but of God's family. I think he was raising me into a Santo Nino. And that's what we are all called to be, the holy sons and daughters of God.